What's up, boopers, and welcome to my Terra Online guide to Fane of Caprima. This dungeon can be pretty long, so I won't waste any time. Let's get right into it. Boop. When you first enter Fane of Caprima, you'll immediately be put against the first boss, a Reaper. I call it a Reaper because of the boss model and the animations it uses, referring to what K-Terra players used to call this model before it had been translated into Fimberlisk. Now, you may be familiar with this boss's attack animations if you did the level 44 dungeon, Necromancer's Tomb, because they may look different, but this boss uses the same attacks as the last boss. The mechanics are slightly different though, so first thing you want to do is make sure your entire group is inside the room, or he'll lock them out. A barricade will spawn upon engaging the boss, and if your party members are not inside the room, you may have to end up doing something stupid like tanking him this way... Once you've pulled the boss, try to have your lancer either hold him in the middle or tank him against one of the side walls. It's a bad idea to tank him in the corners because of the pull mechanic of this fight, and a bad idea to tank him in the front or back walls because he can jump out of the room through the gates. Holding him still is a bit difficult because of his attack animations, so having the tank focus on holding aggro should be more than enough. The main challenge in this fight is killing the poles in the corners. Upon engaging the boss, four poles will spawn in the corners of this room with a bit of HP. These poles, once killed, will place a shield on every member of your party, protecting them from a spell called Burning Ground. I think that's what it's called. About every 45 seconds, there will be a secondary mob that will fly down into the room off of a balcony on the left side of the room, and then cast a spell that sets the floor on fire, doing massive amounts of damage. Though it is possible to survive this attack without the shield, I don't recommend trying to. What you want to do is time it so that you break one of the four poles in the corners of the room as the mob is landing on the ground, so that you shield your party in time to absorb the damage of the attack. The method most people use to do this is to have the healer burn the poles down as low HP as possible, then wait for the mob to fly down from the balcony on the left side of the room, and once the mob flies down low enough, the healer will destroy the pole and grant everyone the shield, then rinse and repeat. If you do it correctly and don't break any out of order, the first pole should respawn after you kill the fourth pole, and you should never run out. Boop. Once the boss dies, collect your loot and pass through the gate that should now be open. You'll then be faced with a fork in the road. Which path you take doesn't really matter, I just prefer the left path. These next few trash pulls do next to no damage and have very little HP, so feel free to pull all of them together and have your party AoE them down. Then, destroy the stone statue and open the gate. You'll then be met by your first mini boss. Though this is a BAM and has BAM attacks, this mini boss has very little hit points and doesn't do a lot of damage, so don't stress about preparing for the fight too much. Just run in and get him out of the way by using standard BAM killing tactics. After you clear some more pillars and trash, you'll make your way to the next room that has a bit of a trick to it. You're fine clearing this room normally, but if you want to save some time, you can try and sneak past all these mobs and just aggro the berserker mob in the back. Because he opens the gate behind him, he's the only one you actually need to kill, 
So if you're careful, you can pull him by himself, Mission Impossible style, and bring him back to your group. Once he's dead, the gate will open and you can run past the rest of the mobs straight to the next boss room and all the other mobs will reset. The second boss of Fane of Caprima is a Crab Rider, using all the same attack animations as any Crab Rider you've seen previously. The trick to this boss though is that when you engage him, a lot of spikes will spawn. First, rows of spikes will spawn along the walls all around the room making it impossible to tank him with your back against the wall without risking being chain knocked over. The main thing are the spike pistons that will be on both the left and right walls though. Throughout the fight, you will occasionally be given warning text in the middle of your screen about blood borers getting ready to come out. This means that the spike pistons on the walls are about to shoot out. If you see the warning, try to look at each side of the room and figure out which pistons are rotating so that you know which ones are about to shoot out so you know where to stand to avoid them. Once you spot the rotating pistons, you must be careful to get out of the front of them so that you do not get hit by the spikes that shoot out. If you are hit, you'll be killed instantly. Note that the spikes also do damage to the boss though, taking him down about 3-5% to of his health. So if you can, try to angle him so that he gets hit by them, but you don't. Note that he always alternates from using one side to the other. It isn't random, so once you avoid the first spike pistons, the rest are very predictable and you can preemptively move to a safe spot before the pistons shoot out. The only tricky part is moving with the crab running around. That's why on this fight it's very important to your Lancer to have the crab under control as best as possible so that the rest of the party can move freely to avoid the spikes without having to worry about aggro on the BAM. I apologize for my slightly slower frame rate on this fight and the frame rate issues I'll have later on as I have a bit of trouble with this dungeon when frapsing. Once dead, the gate will open and you'll be free to move on. The very next trash mob you'll encounter will trigger a trap that spawns four more mobs that hit fairly hard. 
So if you want to play it safe, it's a good idea to leash this mob towards you so that you only aggro two of the four mobs that spawn. This mob you leash is a mystic though. Not unlike the skeletons in Cultist Refuge, he'll cast a black circle on the ground that will do AoE damage and flinch. So do your best to interrupt him with stuns while you kill these mobs. Move through these next few pulls carefully if you need to, depending on your gear. Be sure to switch between using your boss damage reduction crystals and your normal monster damage reduction crystals as you do these trash pulls so that you can get away with safely pulling a few extra. Just keep the mobs grouped up as best you can and avoid getting hit, as these mobs hit fairly hard compared to the trash mobs earlier in the dungeon. Once you've cleared through the trash, you'll be met by another mini-boss, this time a Medusa. Like the first mini-boss, she will not hit particularly hard or do anything difficult. Just make sure to keep her under control, and when she does a backflip animation, try to stun and interrupt her so that she doesn't get her spiky AoE off. Once the mini boss is dead, you'll arrive at the first and only challenging boss of the dungeon, the Lancer from Hell, and there's a lot going on in this fight. First, though there are two rooms, you'll want to tank him in his room and stay out of the first room completely because of another mechanic of the fight. If you have a mystic healer though, it's a good idea to have the mystic drop red balls in the first room for later. When you engage the boss, you'll notice immediately how hard and fast he hits, so make sure your Lancer is using boss defense crystals. Your Lancer will have a hard time holding aggro and building threat between getting hit, so have him rely on counter and try to stun the boss as much as possible to give the Lancer time to build up more threat. If you do get aggro off of the Lancer, be sure to stay relatively close to the Lancer to allow him to taunt back, as this boss can move very far and very fast and will easily be pulled at a taunt range if a healer or DPS gets aggro and tries to kite. Now at 20% intervals, the boss will spawn a summoning ward. These wards spawn in set locations, the first spawning to the left of the room facing the entrance. The moment one of these wards spawn, all of your DPS should get off of the boss and attack it. You have a very short amount of time to kill the ward before it starts summoning priests. So it's a good idea to even have your group's healer help burn the ward down and make sure it dies in time. 
In some cases, you may even need your Lancer to help. And if this is the case, have your healer try to sleep the boss so that you free up your Lancer to help DPS the ward. But if you can't sleep the boss, don't have the Lancer run in to try and help DPS, as having the boss on him will cause more problems than it'll solve. Once the ward is dealt with, get back on the boss to face the next mechanic of the fight. At around 70% and 35%, the boss will spawn a bunch of adds in the room opposite of the room you're tanking him in, and he'll also silence the entire room. As long as these adds are up, rocks will start falling down from the ceiling in the form of massive amounts of red circles, so one player of your group will need to go into the other room and kill those adds. To kill the adds in the opposite room, you must use the fireballs they shoot at you and have them hit the mob in the back. You can't use any skills yourself, as you will be silenced, so you must rely on your ability to dodge the fireballs and make the fireballs hit the mob instead of you. This is why having a mystic drop red balls in this room is good, because if you get hit, you can use the mystic balls to heal up a bit. Having two people run into the room will complicate things, so just have one person do this part on their own, and if they fail and die, send the second one in. It's important to note that while this is happening, if you push the boss to 60%, he'll spawn another ward that'll spawn adds. So it's a good idea to stop DPS before 60% and wait for whoever is in the other room to get back. That way you'll have all your damage dealers alive and healthy and ready to kill the next ward that spawns at 60%. Note that the second ward will always spawn on the opposite side of the room from the first. Once everyone is back, push the boss to 60% and kill the next ward, like the first. At 40% he'll spawn another ward and kill that one just like you did the other. At 35% though, someone will once again need to leave the room and deal with the adds in the other room with fireballs again, so be sure not to push the boss below 20% until he gets back. Also note that the ward spawns a dome around itself. This dome will make you drain the mana of any teammates within 2 meters of you inside the dome. This means that while you are DPSing the ward, do not stand next to anyone or you will completely drain all their mana and destroy their DPS. If you do happen to have a little slow DPS and the ward spawns an ad, don't panic. Just finish off the ward as fast as possible, then focus down the ad that spawns while stunning it as much as possible to prevent it from healing or buffing the boss. Once that person returns, you can burn the boss from 20% to dead and ignore the last ward that spawns, as the boss will die quicker than the ward in most cases.
Once dead, the gate will open and you'll be able to move on to the final boss of the dungeon, Caprima, aka Capricorn. This boss is a bit easier than the previous, you just have to avoid his very large attack animations until about 50%. Once you've charmed up and prepared, run into the room as a group and engage him head on. Ranged DPS and healers will want to be off to the side of this man, not directly behind him, as a lot of his attacks move him backward be it his whirlwind or his backhand swing. Melee too may want to stay on his sides. The Lancer will want to do his best to just keep the boss still and aggroed on him while keeping debilitates up to maximize damage. The boss will occasionally do a shout and summon a ring around his feet, and there are two types of rings. The easiest way to tell them apart is to read what Caprima says. If he calls you feeble, this means that the ring on the ground will hit you if you are outside of it. So if you see feeble, run towards the boss and stand in the ring. If he says he's going to sup from your puny skull, I don't even know what that means, but uh, that means the ring on the ground will do damage if you stand in it, so make sure you get out. He'll also occasionally AoE leash your entire group and then prepare to do two AoEs. So if you can stun him after the leash, try to do this to give your group members time to get out away from the boss. He'll also randomly target a party member and put a red circle on them. Then after a short delay, we'll shoot a fireball at them. To avoid this, just run around until the red circle stops chasing you, then use an escape or dodge skill to get out of it fast. At 50% hit points, the boss will introduce a new mechanic. He'll spawn an obelisk in the middle of the room and make his way to it. Then, he'll drop a large AoE on the ground, so make sure you get out of it. After that, he'll leash the entire group into himself while simultaneously spawning a tiny little snake head in one of the corners of the room. This snake will leash one of your five party members and then turn into a giant snake head, whilst the boss will fly up into the air and create a giant pentagram. Once this happens, the rest of your party has a very short amount of time to run and get from the center of the room to behind the snakehead that spawned before the boss flies back down. If you are not behind the snakehead in time, the skill that the boss is using will one-shot you, regardless of if you are using block or an evasive skill. It's a good idea to memorize where the snakeheads spawn and in what order they spawn there, as they always spawn in the same places in the same order every single time. Every 10% onward, the boss will repeat this mechanic until he's dead. So just continue to get behind the snake heads and avoid the rest of his attacks and you'll have no trouble killing him. I apologize for the very bad frame rate in this fight. My computer has issues while I try to fraps here. Boop. If you're lucky, hopefully he'll drop some enigmatic armor. Yay! I hope you found this guide useful. More will be coming soon as well as another 2k sub FAQ. Yay! 2k subs. I love you guys. And that Lancer advanced stuff, you know, I, I'm trying to keep my secrets on, on the lowdown. I don't want everybody being awesome, but uh, I'll share them eventually. 
If you have any other questions about this dungeon, just ask in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. See you later. Boop.